all stuck in our houses, but I wanted to show you guys one of Pat and my favorite recipes. I've gotten a lot of questions about nutrition, on what we're eating, things like that, and we are trying not to change our nutrition. So we are trying to eat the exact same, even though we are stocked up with lots of snacks in our house. So today I'm gonna show you our twist on our Chipotle chicken burrito bowl. It's healthy, it's quick, you can just put it in the Instant Pot, get other stuff done, and all the work is being done for you. So what you're gonna need is some chicken breast. I typically today have two chicken breasts because the store was out of the little chicken fingers. I like to buy the thin slices, so we'll make it, we'll make it work. From there, I have a homemade taco seasoning. So there's chili pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, and some other things just in here. You can also use store-bought seasoning, but we prefer to go with the homemade. And then I also have a salsa. I typically go and I try to find the big ones because I'm gonna use about a cup of this at a time. And I just check the label and I make sure that there's no sugar in it because some of the salsas have hidden sugar. So just check the ingredients, make sure it all looks good. And I also try to find something that's cost reasonable because I'll be putting quite a lot into the Instant Pot. So the first thing, we're gonna open up our chicken. I already washed my hands. Make sure you wash your hands. Open this guy up. Today we have two chicken breasts. Usually I do two packs of about six to eight of the chicken fingers. But again, resources were limited at our stores nearby. All right, so from here, I am gonna just cut them in half so they're not quite as big. So I'm just gonna cut long ways like if they were chicken fingers, make them a little bit skinnier because this will help when shredding. So now I've essentially got four, four little fingers. The other thing I like to do is if there's any excessive fat, I just like to trim some of it off. So usually with the chicken breast, you're not gonna get too much fat. Um, but I do like to, if I'm able to, just get a little bit of it off. So there's not too much on these. These look pretty good. Awesome. So, all turned around. Once you have your chicken ready, so if there were just fingers, it would already be ready for you. I'm gonna open up my Instant Pot. My Instant Pot is not on yet. We'll turn it on here in a second. But what we're gonna do is take about a cup to a cup and a half of water, one to two cups, no more than two for sure. So I'll just dump the water in and it will fill the bottom of the Instant Pot and you'll have about an inch or half inch of water in there. Next, we're gonna place the chicken. So I'm just gonna take my chicken, put it right in the Instant Pot. You wanna make sure that the chicken is not overlying, okay? So you wanna cover the entire bottom of the Instant Pot, but not have our chicken stacked out on top of each other. It should be one thin line across the bottom of the Instant Pot, which will be no problem since we only have four slices today. And then, all right. So once your chicken's in there, Next, what we're gonna do is add our seasoning. So I like to use about a tablespoon of my homemade seasoning, and I'm just gonna cover the chicken. We'll show you what this looks like in a second. So, that's usually good. Maybe I'll use a teeny bit more. I made it a little extra today. So, I would say one to two tablespoons at most. So once you've added your water, then your chicken, then your taco seasoning, keeping those steps in order I think is very important. We're next gonna cover our chicken with salsa. So we wanna completely cover the top. I usually use a little bit extra because in the end, it'll create this really delicious uh, juice that the chicken can sit in so it keeps having flavor and Patrick and I will dump some of it onto our rice when we eat our burrito bowls. So I'll measure this for you guys. Usually I just dump, but what I'm gonna do is take, we'll start with a cup so that's why I buy the big salsa. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle this right over the chicken. So I'm covering it as much as I possibly can. So that cup did pretty good, but I'm gonna add just about another half a cup. Again, about a cup of salsa is probably good for you. Sometimes we use hot spicy salsa, sometimes we use mild, sometimes we use medium. We change it up and it will give the chicken just a little bit of a different flavor as well. So I'll just make sure all parts, I can't see any chicken breast when I'm done with this. Good. So once I've added the salsa, I like to just kind of smooth it out just to make sure my chicken is completely covered. Once you've completely covered your chicken, it's super important that you cover it all the way. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our Instant Pot and start cooking. So, get it. 
trying to do this facing you guys is challenging. So when you put your lid on your Instant Pot, you wanna make sure the valve is closed so no steam can come off. Then I'm just gonna hit pressure cook. I wanna make sure it's on high pressure. I already have it set for seven minutes. I'm actually gonna bump it up one just because these chicken breasts are a little bit thicker than the chicken tenders that I usually use. And now I'm just gonna hit, actually, it's good. Once it's on, you set the time, it will start working. So what this thing is doing right now is it's not only taking eight minutes, but it's gonna take about 10-ish minutes to pressurize. Once it's reached full pressure in the Instant Pot, then the time will start counting down. It won't turn off automatically. I have it set for a low setting. So once it turns, once it counts all the way down, I'll let it sit for about three minutes on low and then I'll release the steam and then we can shred our chicken. So now that my chicken's in the Instant Pot, if the Instant Pot is taking care of everything for me, I'm gonna work on my rice. I typically like to use jasmine rice and Pat and I were just talking about this. Flip over your bag and check out the ingredients. If it just has one ingredient, that's perfect. Some of our white rices, our long grain rice, they'll be bleached and they'll have all these different ingredients and a lot of times they're stripped of their nutrients. So we like to use jasmine rice as our go-to. So while my chicken's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get my rice started. So as soon as my rice is done, my chicken should be about done as well and it usually times out perfectly. So now that the Instant Pot is cooked, it's been about five to 10 minutes. I let this go a little longer on low because the chicken is thicker. Usually I do somewhere between five and seven minutes. Now make sure you have a wooden spoon. You don't wanna use your hand for this. What we're gonna do is just push the valve to let whatever steam is left come out. If you don't, the, le the less amount of time you leave it on the low, the more steam that you're gonna see shoot out of this. Once all of the steam has released, it will unlock and I can take the lid off. So now that the steam has finished releasing, I can take open up my lid, I think, yep, and take off. That smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. So I'll just put this on the counter for now. So the next part is gonna be shredding our chicken. So what I'm gonna do is just pull out one of my chicken breasts that I created. Sometimes when I do this, they break apart completely. Like I have a hard time even pulling them out. And then next, I'm just gonna shred it. So just taking a knife, I could literally probably use a butter knife to do this, but just shredding my chicken. All right, so now that I've finished shredding my chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and build my lunch. Shredding the chicken breast was a little bit more challenging than if I used the little chicken fingers because it was thicker and I also had to figure out which way I should be shredding. When I use the chicken fingers, like I talked about earlier on in the video, sometimes when I'm going to pull them out, they're just breaking and falling apart and I don't hardly even have to shred them at all. So this is, we're making do with what we have due to the circumstances, but if you can, make sure to get the chicken fingers. So now to build my bowl. This is stuff I've all prepped ahead of time, which if you guys have seen, I've done a meal prep video with how I do my veggies and what I do on Sundays. But for my lunch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my jasmine rice. Typically I would weigh it, and I usually do about 100 to 150 grams, which I'll eyeball for today. So I fill the bottom with my rice. Then next I take my spinach. So I'll just usually do about a handful of spinach right on top because I like it to be like kind of like a salad as well and then from here I usually like to add broccoli I love all the veggies so broccoli just a little bit I'm not sure Chipotle adds broccoli but I add broccoli and then next I do a few asparagus usually three or four pieces and then I'll just cut that up as well dump it in once my asparagus is chopped up I'll just toss it on top for all the flavors. And then normally I would do red, orange, or yellow bell peppers, but again, we're out of bell peppers right now due to the circumstances at the grocery store, but that's okay, I can make do without. So next, I'm gonna add my chicken. For my chicken, I typically do about three ounces. So again, around a palm size, so I'll eyeball that today. Just kind of spread it on top. That looks pretty good. And then from there, what I like to do is use some of the juice sometimes, and I'll kind of pour that on, or salsa. So this is my absolute favorite salsa verde. So I'm just gonna dump some of that right on top. And then depending on the time of day, if I would need a little bit more fat, I would dice up about a half of an avocado and add that to my meal as well. All right, so to store my chicken, this is the key. What I like to do is get a casserole dish or Tupperware or whatever you're using that day. I like to use ooh, glass Tupperware. 
if I can. And then I'm gonna just put all of my chicken into that. Usually I have more than this because I usually double the batch, but again, resources right now are limited, so we're using what we can. And then I like to take the juice, so the water and all the salsa, and just dump it over top. And use most of it. And that's why I like to use more salsa when I cook it. And now when I put it in the fridge, it will sit in this and the chicken will start to absorb it and soak it up. So this meal actually gets better the next day and the next day and so on. It usually doesn't last us more than two or three days because we love it. We put it in bowls, we make tacos with it. We do all sorts of things with it. And it's just an easy, healthy, go-to meal for Patrick and I. And it has a really good source of carbohydrate with your rice has great veggies, good source of protein, and you can add a healthy fat with an avocado. So it's also a well-balanced meal when it comes to your macros. I love sharing these meals with you guys. This is something Patrick and I do on the regular basis. So if you guys try this, if you make it, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Christy Airmel. I want to see how it turned out. I want to share it with everyone else if you guys have made it. So definitely do that. Let me see pictures if you're enjoying it, whatever. And then make sure to comment below on anything else you guys would love to see. Also in our description is every link to anything you need to know. So make sure you guys check that out as well in the description in the bio of this video. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you make it and you really enjoy whatever meal this is, whether it's lunch or dinner for you.